Hi, this is Brian Kim, and this is case number 12 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. I'm going to share with you this case of a small pupil in a 1 to 2 plus dense and sticky cataract. And I'll show you the double chop, cross chop maneuver and how I do my standard technique and how I'm able to disassemble this lens, even though the visibility is not very good, because I have a very good understanding of my instruments and where I'm putting them and making sure that they're within the capsular bag when I do the chop maneuvers. You can do this case confidently and without the need for any pupil expansion devices. So you can see this pupil is probably around a four millimeter pupil. I'm making my paracentesis incisions and then injecting intracameral lidocaine and epinephrine. You can see as I'm injecting around the pupillary edges and underneath the iris, I don't see much response to the epinephrine. I'm injecting dispersive viscoelastic and then get ready for my triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove and then tunnel and then enter the anterior chamber. I make my puncture style capsular rexus. I puncture with the rexus forceps, pull downward and pushing to the right in order to create a slight C shape, grab the rexus flap and then pull around and then just re-grabbing as I go. And I'm just following the contour of the pupil because in this case, it happens to be about the right diameter for my capsular rexus. I burp some viscoelastic out of the anterior chamber and then perform the capsular fornix hydrodissection. I place the cannula out to the equator, point the cannula tip down. You get a nice fluid wave decompressed to the left side. And then I spin the lens on the right side. You can see the lens rotates very nicely. I lift the wound and enter the eye without irrigation to minimize any decimase trauma. I remove the surface epinuclear material and then get ready for the double chop. I place the chopper out to the equator, turn the phaco tip vertically, sub-incisionally, bring both instruments together and crush the lens in half. This is a double chop maneuver. I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator, pull it to the center, and this is the cross chop maneuver, which I crush the contralateral hemineucleus in half. Now I'm beginning mechanical fracturing where I'm going to crush the lens pieces into bite-sized pieces and emulsify them. You can see that this first quadrant was then removed very quickly. I'm trying to pull this second quadrant into the AC, but it didn't want to come. So I just manipulate it and then I'm going to try to re-grab it and then crush it in half. This is a sticky lens, so even though I'm getting good chops, they just don't seem to want to come out of the bag. And so it's very important in these situations not to try to go pedal to the metal and try to grab these lenses using ultrasonic energy or high vacuum because you might grab things that you're not supposed to, especially in this small pupil. You might grab the iris and cause some damage to the iris. It's much better to grab the pieces with the chopper or using a combination of maneuvers using a little bit of vacuum and the chopper to mechanically kind of bring the pieces into the central safe zone. Half the lens is out, place the chopper out to the equator, place a phaco tip deep in the bag, divide this second hemineucleus, making sure it's completely separated, place the chopper out to the equator again, and then crushing this third quadrant in half, using the vacuum lifting the lens up, and then crushing the pieces, using mechanical fracturing forces, to crush the lens in between the chopper and the phaco tip, using a little bit of vacuum to help position the lens piece right in front of me. This is the last quadrant, place the chopper out of the equator, crush the lens piece in half, again, crushing the lens pieces, sandwiching the lens pieces, and using intermittent bursts of ultrasonic energy and vacuum. This is the final piece. I'm gonna crush the lens in half, making sure that the lens is essentially debulked. However, during the last bits that are being removed. I want to keep that chopper deep in the bag as I remove those last pieces. Once the last pieces are removed, I take the chopper out, replace it with the BSS cannula, put the phaco tip out, and then switch it with the INA handpiece. This is that fluid exchange, and I do this to maintain the chamber stability. Start to remove the cortical material. This is a pretty clean bag. There's not much cortex in there, so I switch to the polish and start polishing underneath the anterior capsular surface. When the visibility is not very good, I always switch to the polish, especially on the cortical removal component, because if you have weak zonules and you're too aggressive with the cortical removal, the aspiration can actually cause a little bit of zonular stress if you inadvertently grasp the capsule and pull on it. And so I use a polish mode, especially when the visibility is not as good. I'm using the cannula now to pulse BSS bursts into the capsule or fornix in the subincisional space to remove any cortical wisps. I'm filling the bag with cohesive viscoelastic 
and then using the sweep to sweep underneath the anterior capsular surface, first on the left side and then on the right side. And then I'm injecting my single piece acrylic intraocular lens. After the lens goes in, I quickly go in with the INA tip with irrigation off, go underneath the lens and rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And this allows me to make sure that both haptics are within the capsular bag because I'm able to tilt it and then push it into the capsular fornix. As I tilt it, I lift and then make sure that I remove all the viscoelastic between the posterior capsule and the lens. And then I push the optic into the bag and then evacuate the rest of the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber. And then I hydrate my incisions. So again, this is an example of a small pupil. It wasn't quite of a floppy pupil, but nonetheless, it was small. This was a one of two plus dense lens and a sticky lens. And so it's important to make sure that your instruments are within the capsular bag when you do the double chop and cross chop maneuver. Leverage mechanical fracturing forces to crush the lens pieces. Work in the central safe zone away from the iris and making sure that you protect the posterior capsule whenever you're emulsifying the lens pieces, especially when you're on the last pieces. So I hope this was helpful to you and thank you for your attention.